We're into match three here, the Kumamoto Masters Japan. It's quarterfinals day here on court one. It's time for mixed doubles again. Tanken Meng and Lai Pei Jing. The Malaysians are in action against the second seeds here, the home favourites, Yuta Watanabe and Arisaka Kashino. Earlier on, we uh, did see Chen Tzu Wei and Huang Yachong really take apart Chen Tang Jian and To Yi Wei. They'll be playing Xiu and Chen. That is a tasty one. That'll be a repeat of the uh, World Championships the finals. They'll be playing in the semis. The winner of this match we're about to have is going to be up against other Yamashita Shinoya or Huang and Feng. Chris Langridge here with me. Uh, Chris, you watched Huang and Tung earlier on talk about the mix up. How good were they in that opening match? Yeah, incredible. Uh, second game. Really, really good. Um, very, 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 very high level, especially towards the latter stage of the second game. Um, I think they showed why they were, you know, one on one <laughs> and the best. What about these two pairings for you? Um, I think it's going to be a big challenge for the Malaysians. Um, it's possible, definitely, but I do think the, the Japanese are quite big favourites in this encounter. Let's have a look at their head-to-head, -head, which is definitely in favour of the Malaysians at 6-3. They won their most recent meeting at the Asian Championships last year. Very, very comfortably Red. indeed. So black for you. You want the toss, but your choice. In fact, uh, the first three went the way of the Malaysians between uh, 2017 and 2019. And since 2021, it has been the Japanese who have won all the matches. And so as Chris said, it's uh, very much the Japanese would be favoured here, especially at home. So let's have a look at Ta Tankan Meng, who is uh, 29 years of age, very tall, 185. He's from the south of the country in Johor. Currently ranked at 21st, though they have been as high as fifth. That was just a year ago. They have had a pretty sharp drop there from the uh, top five out of the top 20. Lai Jing is 31, further up the country in Kwantan. And 6-0. They have uh, been in the medals recently in the Studio Cup. They got a bronze. The Commonwealth Games also got a bronze medal in the last one in Birmingham. They have won the Korea Open last year. They will be titled to their name. And they were runners up at the Singapore Open in 2019. Three titles also at Grand Prix level. This is their path that so far. Perhaps a surprise in the opening round where they dropped a game. That was uh, pretty tight at times. A bit easier, perhaps more surprising that win against Kim Won Ho, Jung Na Eun, the six seeds from Korea. Yuta Watanabe is uh, 26 from the capital, Tokyo. 167. Former World Number One's actually just about a year ago. Ready to Currently play. second bronze medalist at the uh, Tokyo Olympics, at home games, World Championships. They have never won it, but they have had a couple of second place finishes in 21 and 22. Finished third in 2019, and of course, earlier this year in Copenhagen. Arisa Higashino is from the north of the country in Hokkaido, 160 centimetres tall. And they were runners up, oh, sorry, third at the Asia Championships last Coach. year. Coach. Tight match against Yehong Wei and Li Chia Sin in the second round. Very tight margins there. Together they have won 14, sorry, 10 titles together. Helen Purnamasari of Indonesia is our umpire. And 
and uh, umpire Ramida is our service judge from Thailand. Yeah, this year, Watanabe and Higashino have won the India Open and the Japan Open. They've been runners up at the Malaysia Open, Singapore Open, and Indonesia Open. So very decent year for them. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Arisa Higashino and Yuta Watanabe, Japan. And on my left, Tan Kiang Meng and Lai Beijing, Malaysia. Lai Beijing to serve to Arisa Higashino, Labo. So the Malaysians will get us going here. Two. One left. finals to defenders in points and they can't qualify for the tour finals and they made a semi at the last one so yeah. they're going to lose those points which are 8,400 which is a you know a very very big amount of points and if they do they're going to slip even further and it, it, then, as well, right? it gets trickier because they're never going to get seeded in any tournaments and when you don't have the chance of getting seeded it's so tough because you could have anyone first round but they they've, they're showing here you know they can still play at a very good level they just haven't quite found that form throughout the the last 12 months yeah, I was saying earlier in the, in the very first match, Chen Tang Chia and Toh Yue, they've had a meteoric rise, kind of gone the other way for them. They were a new pairing about a year ago, 270 odd, and they're now top 10 in the world. Yeah, and they, you know, they have over the last 18 months, the amount of both players have improved, and it is, it is amazing. It is amazing how much, you know, they have improved, and I think this Malaysian pair, very, very experienced, but I think they're coming to the latter stages of their career. I mean, I hope they're going to continue for a, a fair bit longer, but yeah, they're, they're definitely a different part of their career from the other younger Malaysian pair that we right. saw earlier today. And you've also got uh, Gosun Huat and Lajshman Jamie, who are in between the two yeah. as well, so that complicates the mix as well for the Olympic qualification. Malaysians in front. Four, three. Fatting there from Tanka Meg. I've seen, you know, the simplistics of doubles, let's call it, in regards to you want the attack. Almost every rally that a pair has had the attack, they've, you know, they've won the rally. And it's the stress that you put on your opponent that's just from simply having the attack that causes that. Maybe from uh, Watanabe. Yeah, I definitely say it's one of Yuta's best shots. He does have such a phenomenal stop drop. Yeah, 
yesterday you and I talked about the conditions here and you said it's pretty even, there's no real drift issues. Uh, any change for you from what you've noticed? Uh, I mean, it, there's, there is a slight drift. Oh. I just say it, it's not as excessive as some halls right. where it can be up to a foot. Um, I'd say it's, it's not game changing, is it? It's not. It's not extreme. It, it's you can see pairs are not too comfortable lifting, um, just because it can. If you don't get the lift at the right height, if you hit it too hard, yes, it can go out. But I wouldn't say somewhere like maybe Singapore, where crikey, if the drift is extreme. Yeah. It's not to that extent. Um, it looks a, you know a nice haul. Uh, it's. No, no issues with the visibility, anything like that. It's not too cold, too hot, anything like that. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why we've seen some good performances from players so far. covering his line just a fraction more. It was well placed attack there for Utah. If he'd have Tan have been just a fraction nearer the line, I think he would have been able to get it. That was long. They maintain the lead here, the Malaysians. Yeah, this is the uh, the very first Kumamoto Masters Japan. A new addition on the calendar. And it's been received very, very well, as evidenced by a three-quarters full venue oh. at the moment. Nine, Great noise as well in here, Chris. Good atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, the guy with his drum, he's back, and he's, he's <laughs> really making some noise. We certainly heard him yesterday when Momota was playing, didn't we? Yeah, I can't imagine what the hall's going to be like when Momota steps in today. Oh, it's, yeah. going to be, it's almost going to be like... Uh, like Indonesia. I, mean, I was going to say, it's going to be Astora. But then I don't know, I don't know if that's a step too far because the Astora is special. But <laughs> yeah. I feel like the guy in the drums next to me is that loud. Seven, <laughs> so I've that three point cushion here. Service so Elias had a. Good start to the match. She's been sharp on that net. Anytime she's played soft, she's been ready. And then she's just kept the shuttle going in a downward direction. She's been very efficient. Good serve. That's the thing. So for me there, I'd say Tan actually did a good flick. But he was too deep with his base. When you get your opponent off balance, you need to step up. As soon as you feel that your opponent can't hit an angle and they can't generate full power because their body weight's going the wrong way, you need to have your base slightly further forward as a defensive player. Nine, ten. Now, Watanabe and Higashino bearing down on Tan and Lai. Just a point in it. And it's all level. Yeah, really well well read by Higashina. Bit of an obvious shot, but she straight away there chases it. And that's the thing, as a net play, you've got to be active at the net. You've got to make calculated moves. Ready? 
this. Okay, thank you. Well, we were talking about Feng Yang Chen, Wang Dong Bing. Well, being the big challengers here, they've had a fantastic year. They are actually trailing in court three, by the way. Pretty much time to lawyer. And in uh, perhaps some danger. Being eliminated. It would be a story. Meanwhile, great work from Watanabe. Looking around, um, even on this court, obviously, you've got Hayakawa behind the court, who was a fantastic men's doubles player. He also played mixed to a very high level. Just looking around all the courts of the Japanese players are. And every court has an incredibly successful player on the court, coaching, uh, coaching the players. And Japan now have so much depth in their coaching team. Right. And I think this is a big reason why, as a nation, you know, they are a superpower because they, they have so many players coming up, especially latest doubles, it's incredible. Yeah. And oh, they dominate the top ten. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's incredible. incredible. In that interval, they've just accelerated, haven't they? Yeah, this is the thing that you can't... The, the lift is too passive. It's a slightly short lift, you can see, but it's an obvious lift. It's a nice lift. It's an easy lift. Right. If you give what's an time, is it? Yeah, that's the thing. It is. So he's, you know, he's behind it. He's got all the time in the world, and he has got one of the best stop drops in the world. Mm. Probably, if, probably has got the best. And if he feels comfortable to play it, he's so dangerous. from Watanabe, six unanswered, five unanswered points since the interval. It's the thing he is chasing forward there and he gets their early brilliant shot. Six, seven, Look at that, he chases forward, wherever the gap is, he's filling it and that's exactly what he did there and the shot went into the gap, took it early and then played a great shot. So important for the player who's not hitting the shot to be filling the gap, so there is no gap. She looked Sansota. frustrated there because she know off that 11, serve. 16. They were in a firm, firm control so far since the interval. First point on the board after the break for the Malaysians. That's two in a row. Yushina there, she's just got a little bit caught up. She's got to lift that one. She's too low to play net when her opponent's Arisa, on the tape. Arisa, get ready quicker. to cheer the Japanese. Lovely work there from uh, Watanabe. Late Beijing, late Beijing. Get ready to receive. He does come in a height, doesn't he? Yeah, he's, he's a tall player, Tan, and he, he does hit it hard. 
I think sometimes he can get a little bit caught up just being um, the same thing over and over again. So he gets a little bit, his opponents can predict what he's going to do. Oh, okay. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, he's very consistent, he's very hard working, he's got good power. Um, but in that rally, it was nice just to see drop shot, made what's, what's an army move, and then hit the big power twice and managed to get through. Good touch of the Nephilim lie there. That's good. Brilliant again. But, I mean, he's such a hard-working player, but I mean with his movement, he is consistently hunting wherever the gap is. You see in his rally here. And he, I can't quite see because the angle, but he steps in so well to play the cross court. Reads where it's going and it's so integral. If you step in, you're taking the shuttle early. You take the shuttle earlier, it means it's harder for your opponents because they're taking it later. And again there. Oh, he steps in. Oh, great reactions is out though. And that's the luxury they have because Higashino, she can cover him very well at the rear of the court or covering round. You know, she's fantastic at the back. She's one of the only few ladies doubles players or ladies players that plays the doubles category that you see on a consistent basis doing a jump smash. And she's got, you know, fantastic power, and variation and creativity from the back. The first of seven game points potentially saved by the Malaysians. Brilliant cut out there by Led at the net. I think it was the wrong shot from Weston Harvey, but incredible cut out. but it was obvious where it was going. And then she reads it, it's just this one here, reads it, look at the move. She's moved before he's even hit it because she knows exactly where it's going. There, good interception. So uh, a pretty straightforward first game then for Watanabe Higashino. They'll take it 21-15 against Tana Lai. from uh, court three. Feng and Huang have withstood the pressure. They've turned it around. It's uh, one all over there. We'll bring that up because, uh, of course, Nick Stubbles on here in court one. Watanabe Higashino leading here against Tan and Lai. Again, it was a 
Not the uh, greatest of starts for the uh, Japanese pair. But they got into their groove, didn't they? I just love that hang in the air from Watanabe. Yeah, he's got, he's, you know, he's a very athletic player. He's got an incredible jump. Um, so this, there. Oh. He has, he, I wouldn't say he has the most power, but he has fantastic creativity, vision, mm. but also how hard he works off the shot. I know it sounds strange, but what I mean by that is he's always filling the gap, and I think this is slightly underestimated from himself. He reads the game well, and he's always making a move to cover whatever the gap is. The amount of work he does in his movement off the shuttle is a lot. Just to expand on that a little bit more for those a bit newer to the sport in terms of the work you do One. off the shuttle when you're so, not in play. Yeah, so the, the, the integral part is that everyone is trying to find a gap because if you are hitting the shuttle into a gap, there's a space, your shot doesn't have to be as accurate, right. and you, it allows you a bit of um, breathing space, let's call it. So everyone is trying to hit a gap, and the quicker you fill the gap, the smaller the gap is, or the earlier you'll take the shot. And some players hesitate, some players Two. don't cover each other One. perfectly. But I say Watanabe, I mean, people forget how he was one of the best men's doubles players in the world as well. Yes. You know, with Endo, they were a fantastic pair. He just is a very good player. Um, he reads the game well, he moves well, and when you just watch the shuttle, you don't always watch what the non-hitting player's doing. And it's integral, the non-hitting player is cut there. Again. There, really and across. Across. Yeah. Right. But at lightning speed. Yeah. And this is the thing, this is why he's so effective, because his partner's hitting a shot here. And look how quick he's covering that, there. And, this, and then obviously fantastic placement to go across his opponent like she's committed to the forehand. But this is something that he's very, very good at. And yes, there's other players that are good, but I think can sometimes go unspotted just because everyone's watching the shuttle. Right. You're not always watching the non-hitting player. You're watching the player hitting the shuttle. So it's your anticipation and your peripheral vision of, of what's going on around Yeah, you. and it's how you work together as a partnership because there'll be set plays that you'll have. So sometimes you'll make a move and your partner knows the move before it's even happened because you've <laughs> essentially spoken before the rally right. and said, well, I'm going to play that shot, you cover that shot. So it can happen at the beginning of a rally where you have a set play and you communicate exactly what's going to happen and it can catch your opponents by surprise. But uh, Uta and uh, Higashino, they're, they're so good at what they do at with covering each other and taking calculated risks. This is what you have to do. It's not a risk, it's a calculated risk because you... You've done the video analysis on your opponents to have an idea what they're going to do. Right. If you're hesitant, if you're waiting, you can't take the shuttle early. If you don't take it early, you can't put pressure on your opponent. Um, this is something Yuta does so well. Yeah, keep an eye out for that to everyone if you're watching. Uh, that there. Like, he's chased that, you know. It's so, I mean, the, the outcome wasn't so good. Because right. for me, the, the swing was too big. But he was on that so early, and it wasn't that bad a block. Right. Because he's, he's guessed where it's going. But he's intelligently guessed. It's not just pot luck. Also part of it, the, the, the chemistry you have with your Four. partner, because they've oh. played together for so long as well, haven't they? I mean, definitely, you, you can have two very good players on court together, but if they don't have cohesion, if they don't play for each other, if they don't cover each other, yeah. they're not going to be a great partnership. We can have two players that maybe aren't of the highest level and in the very, very best, but if they, you know, if they complement each other, if they play for each other, if they're well organised, it sounds crazy, but they have to, you, you have to respect each other. You know, you have to almost be a family on court in regards to you're playing for each other. If one of you is underperforming, you've got to help them. You've got to find a way to help them feel more comfortable. So as a team, as a partnership, you perform the best. And, and Chris, I mean, you, you've been uh, a player and a coach. How much of that's trying to uh, engendered or fostered off the court as well? Yeah, it is because, you know, you've got to have there's things you have to discuss off court so that on court it's smoother. Because yeah. you can't just discuss it on court, it's too late. You're, right. in, you're in kind of the, the, the competitive environment where sometimes you, you don't act in the perfect way just right. because you're stressed or you're nervous or you're getting frustrated because you really want to win. So you have to discuss a lot of these things off court to then make sure on court that's great attack from Tan. Right. But that was through variation. It was the cross court that set it up, the cross court drop yeah. that set him up. Um, yeah, and there'll be so many, you know, discussions that you'll have about if something in a tournament went wrong, how to try and rectify it, because it is a continuous basis of learning, sure. improving, and there's so many areas you can improve in. Cohesion is one of them, uh, understanding each other. You know, you don't mean to get frustrated at your partner, but it happens. You want to win out there, and if, yeah. if you know, if there were certain things I used to do by accident that would frustrate my partner, <laughs> you know, but he would communicate but you, quite you well. you talk about yeah, that. Yeah, you know, yeah. we got on very well in regards to 
I don't think we ever really had an argument, which wow. is quite unique. But yeah. it, but it was because we were very honest and open with each other. And um, if both of us took feedback from each other quite well, in a well yeah, yeah, in a which good, is yeah. you know it's an integral thing to do. You don't they're giving feedback to try and help each other because the integral thing, you know, the main Ultimately, goal you is want to go forward. Exactly. Together right. as a partnership, you want to improve. Brilliant. But then Higashino, she's played a shot, she's chased. You know, she's hit, she's covered. And again, Tan, little bit hit. Look at this, good movement from her, but it's a bit obvious. The shot quality as well isn't good enough, but it, she's at the moment reading what Tan's doing very well. As soon as Tan is below tape, Higashina's taking a risk and she's getting it right almost every time. Oh, great coverage there. Oh. Brilliant defensive shot. And this is the thing, he has got a very good defense. Um, Tan, it's just sometimes he can be a bit passive. I mean, incredible, incredible power from even taking it late that he could generate. Again, it's a pretty decent start here from Tan and Lai. But as we've seen, it's how you finish. And they sustain this. Very good attack there from Tan. But the first one that he had, he just put an angle on it. He just kept it steep. Right. Second one, a bit more power than the third one. Really good placement. You can see there in the replay there, the first one, it was just a wrist. It was just bringing it down, getting an angle. Second one, a bit more power than the third one. was on balance. Really good placement. Japanese have an excellent record in quarterfinals. 39 out of 54 wins at this stage. Of the last five. Oh. The thing there, the defence from the Malaysians, they're not making. See here, Watanabe, he's on balance every time. He's in a good position. They've got to make him move, they've got to get him off balance. If he's attacking on balance, he's so dangerous because he's got every shot. He's got the stop drop, he's got a bit of slice, reverse, he's got the smash, the flatter smash, the steeper smash. Uh, quarter final stages. Service 20 over. wins out of uh, 36. Nine, seven. They've only won one of their last four quarterfinals. That was their last quarterfinal, the China Open. When they beat Bob Ranaker and Taran Tanajai. That was a great result. Prior to that, though, they lost three of them against the likes of Wang Yiliu and Wang Dongping. That was last year in the Japan Open. This is only their second quarterfinal in 2023. To uh, illustrate that uh, this year has been tough for them. They are in front here though. Now there's a similar sort of lead that they enjoyed in the uh, previous game, but then the Japanese came storming back. It was 10-7 uh, then. The Japanese won the next four to go 11-10 after the break. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> this again, what I mean, I mean, Lai did incredible in that rally. She defended so well, but it, it was just relentless pressure. And in the end, there, that pressure. But look, stepping up again, Utah. Uh, right. And this is what I mean. He's the not, he's the non-hanging player. Look how much, look how high up the court he is. He's taken that so early because he's taken the calculated risk. And you can only do that if you have full confidence in your partner and your partner's shot. Ah! Two in a row here for the Japanese. It was a decent lead. Well, a decent cushion at least for a ton of light. No, no, no. Stay on court, stay on court. Ah! No going off. No buy it. They've been pretty firm about this. Yeah. Yeah, this is the thing. Don't get it wrong. Great attack from you. It's a great attack. But Tan, he's just straight lifting, but high. 
and he's just got all the time in the world and you just got too many shots to give him that much time what, that, what would you have suggested that this is the thing so tan's got to either push the shuttle flatter push it in between the two japanese players or he's got to try and outmaneuver yuta if he's just lifting straight it's very a it's very obvious b it's a high lift which gives you to a lot of time but it, yuta's on balance if you're having to lift your opponent the integral part is you have to make the move you have to get your opponent off balance when they're attacking and this is what I mean by sometimes he is too passive, too simplistic. And it's deja vu here because uh, it was exactly the same situation where Watanabe and Higashino were trailing 7 10 and then went on with the next four. They're 11 10 up in game two, having already taken that first game. In game one, they went into the interval ahead and actually just uh, accelerated post interval and won it very, very comfortably. thought Higashino was going to take that. Um, but yeah. Confidence with which he's playing at the moment. What's that mean? Again, the pressure and attack. Malaysians got to find a way of getting the attack. We were talking off air a little earlier, Chris, about the, the, the mixed doubles pairings. It's just fascinating, isn't it? It's really good to see. Yeah, mixed doubles at the moment is... It, very, very, very strong discipline. When you look at the kind of the top, maybe six pairs in the world, they are all incredibly strong. The level is very, very, very high against doubles at the moment. Japanese pair move around each other, cover each other, because incredible, both of them. When one of them then changed what they did, the other one then altered. It was... Let's have a look here, to illustrate Chris's point. But this is the thing, at every point they're just covering each other, they're stepping in, they're taking the shuttle early, they're not letting the shuttle come to them. They're being so proactive. And that causes so much stress on your opponent, because the earlier you take the shuttle, the more complicated everything is for your opponent, because they're taking it later. So I guess someone might ask, why don't the Malaysians just take it earlier? It's the thing, it's done. not as easy as that, that's <laughs> right. the thing. Because you've got to move around each other at speed. The, the, the quicker you play as a partnership, so say you and me were doubles pair, yeah. a partnership, if we played very quick, it's complicated for us because we have to be able to maintain the high speed, but it's very, very complicated for our opponents because they've got to deal with the high speed. Right. Um, and I would say the Malaysians at the moment, there's hesitation. Okay. There's also, that's not their style. They're, they're very consistent, they're very solid, especially Tan. But I'd say he, he doesn't do anything at phenomenal speed. Speed, right. Because then they have to be able to cover each other at the quick speed, and the Japanese can do that. A 
again that move from him. She, like, she knows where it's going. As soon, like, before it's here, we get to see it in the replay. I mean, she stood there. She stood there with a racket weight in. So watch here. Here, look, she's already moving off. There. Ah, right. She knows exactly where it's going. It's like a set play, but it's also just a bit too obvious from the Malaysians. On, on the lack of mobility, perhaps, of Tan or slower mobility, is that is that simply down to size? No, I mean, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say he's got the lack of mobility. He, you know, he's, he is, he, he's, he's a good player with regards to his speed. It's just, I don't think he can consistently, have, especially as a partnership together, have that phenomenal speed. Okay. I mean, if we're, you know, if you're talking a phenomenal speed, Yuta is up there, maybe not Zheng Siwei, because he is, you know, the Usain Bolt of uh, <laughs> the doubles catcher. But Yuta is incredibly quick. But again, you, you know, you pick two players that are not the biggest, not the tallest. Is that, is that part of it? I mean, generally, that if you're a taller individual and a slightly bigger individual, it, it's it's difficult to consistently move at a very quick speed, but also change direction at a quick right. speed. But then you do have the slight advantage of a reach the and reach. angles because you're taller. Oh! So it's kind of a, yeah, swings okay, around here. Yeah, yeah. And Yuta doesn't maybe have the, the height advantage, but he is—he has a phenomenal jump, and he's incredibly quick. And he is always hunting the shuttle. He is proactively seeking the shuttle to take it early. That's been a fine period post-interval once again. Oh, that's a great yeah. shot. Well, how we got there. How on earth did he get that? And then he misses the easier one. <laughs> yeah, that was much easier, wasn't it? It's almost like a Superman dive. I don't know how he managed to pick that up. Brilliant. Hopefully we get to see that. Here we go. And then even to play, the shot he actually played on the floor was quite a good quality shot. So since the uh, interval, it is 7-3 uh, in favour of what's done for Higashino. And we can tell you, uh, court three, Feng and Huang, after being under a bit of pressure, have now stalled back to take third, 21-7. To advance to the semi-finals. There we play the winner of the match here, that we're on court one. And that, of uh, course, will be very tasty semi-final lineup. World champion Chiu and Tsai versus the opponents they beat in the final, uh, which was uh, Wang and Zheng. And we've got presumably the Japanese here, they're only three points away, playing Wang Gongbing and Feng Yang. So that's, that's tasty, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's best four pairs for you? The four of the top six, definitely. Um, and if, if that's sharp wow. on the net there. Higashino makes a great shot, oh. but that's it. We haven't seen that. Yeah. He held it, and it was something different. Yeah. You know, you just chased the obvious shot, and that's a fantastic shot 15, from Tan. 18. Not enough of this for you. But look, hold, and then it's yeah. because it's something it's different. It's not yeah. expected. You right. just covering the obvious one, which has happened 90% of the time for me. Tan's play, but Tan's got the ability to. You know, he's a he's a fantastic player, but sometimes I think he gets a little bit too simplistic with some of his cho uh, shot choices. Well, they've dragged it back a bit here and trail by three. Very athletic there. You got up so well there, Utah. A couple of points away now. For the Japanese, unless the Malaysians really dig deep. Characteristically wayward. It's the right shot. There was a gap there. Just almost tried to play too perfect a shot. So I'm not sure Leia was quite wide enough to cover her line. Well, that was super.
superb overall from Watanabe and Higashino. Fairly comfortable in the end over tunnel line. Yeah, I would say it was. I'd say it's a very, very organised, professional performance from the Japanese pair. Um, you know, and they showed why currently they are world number two. Brilliant performance in front of the home crowd as well. As they advance to the semi-finals. After an excellent performance. Charging ahead and they continue their fine run against this Malaysian pairing, seven wins on the bounce for Watanabe and Higashino. And they dearly love to win their home tournament as the sole Japanese representative left in the mixed doubles. So, a good win then for Yuta Watanabe and Arisa Higashino, the second seeds from Japan, beat Malaysia's Tan Kian Meng and Lai Pei Jing 21 16, 21, sorry, 21 15, 21 16, and it's been done in 40 minutes.